Okay, so just work on the lift. We put the other bolts on the other side of the lift. I think we're good. There should be no issue at all. Everything's epoxied. Everything is to the maximum, right? Left no chance of anything happening. Um, we are going to put the hood shocks really quick on the Porsche. And um, the exhaust thing is really weighing on me. The fear of, of being unhappy with the OBX exhaust. So I don't know. We'll have to feel that a little bit. Let's put these hood shocks on really quick. Okay. So here we have the stabilis. Can we even focus? Can we even focus? There we go. The actual OEM hood struts, hood shocks, the frunk shocks, the trunk shocks, whatever you want to call them. So if you didn't know in the past, this thing like stays up. It's nice and warm here in the shop. Let me, we're a little too close. It's a little much, right? Touch that. Um, whenever it gets a little bit cool, it falls down. So when you're over at the Walmart and all the hot chicks are looking at you, you don't want your trunk eating you when you're trying to put groceries in it, right? Right? Okay. What we're gonna do, this is aluminum hood, it's very light. Let's go ahead and pop off this one. Oh my God. Oh my God. Woo! Got the butter fingers. Almost hit the paint. Almost did it. So on the top here, there's just a little, little clip. And you just push that out. Just like so. And of course, what I'm trying to do it on camera. There it is. It's gonna be a real pain in the butt. We'll pop the bottom out. It's like so. I'll just kind of shove that off of there. Yeah. Shove that off of there real gingerly. The bottom should come right off. The top, we're just gonna leave the little clips in, probably won't even focus. Leave little clips in. We're gonna go right onto it. And it should just pop right on there. Now, if you buy some crappy aftermarket shocks, they're not gonna be that easy. Oh, trust me, we've been down that road before. They're gonna be a real, real nightmare. And a lot of what's gonna happen, the cheap shocks are gonna be very difficult to get off or to close the hood. They're gonna be way over gas. When you go to close the hood with aluminum hood, what's gonna happen is eventually, you're gonna start kinking your hood. We had that before on some BMWs that came in um, with the trunk shocks, right? And the trunk is very hard to close. Well, eventually you start messing up the hinges and that's aftermarket struts. So I knew better than that. So on this, we went out of our way to get the legit struts. See, you don't want to do that either. But we got it. And some leaves. Alright. Come off of there just like so. Go right back on her like this. Perfect fit. Perfect fit. That was a little clip that came off of this. Let me get you in here for a close up. We're using a big camera today, so it's a little bit more difficult. You can see here how this operates. There's a clip, I got it popped out on the back. And all you gotta do, we can push the damn thing back in, there it goes, is take your little screwdriver and pry in. Why would you want to focus? It's pry in the back of here and pop that loose. And then there's one of the clips laying right there. 
and that's it. Real simple. Now, we'll chuck this here in our bucket, our bucket of broken hopes and dreams, and we'll pull this back a smidge, a little bit of that, and let's see what we got. See? It doesn't close real super hard. I mean, a lot of those aftermarket struts, you're just hogging down on trying to get to close, right? Look at that. Perfect. So I'll put a link in the description for all you 987 guys that have issues with this. For some reason, most of the time it's only the front. It's never the rear hatch. The rear hatch ones on this one is totally fine. And uh, if you get tired of getting eaten by your your front lid, this is what you have to do. Okay, as you guys know, it's dark in the shop. It's black in this corner over here. You're like, what the hell, fatty? Why is it so dark in your shop? Well, these big halo lights that we have, one of them, you can see it's barely on right there. And all the other ones are in a full tilt. So we have one go out and these are the kind of the newest, the latest, greatest, there's four of them in the shop as far as shop lights. It gives off a crazy amount of light and it's only one plug in and you're done. You can't wire it, I guess you want to. Um, so I called the comp, I called Amazon, bought everything through Amazon. This old man learned in recent years, if you don't buy it off eBay, you pay a couple extra dollars through Amazon, you get a really long warranty on stuff. That's why I bought the AC unit and all that. So we got the warranty on these, so it's covered. So they're sending us out a new one. I just bought it just off Amazon. Didn't tell them nothing, right? So somehow I guess they looked up my username and figured out that I have a YouTube channel. So now they want to send me stuff. But uh, for the BMW channel, so they sent me or sending a new one of these lights and a new one of those new deals you plug in a regular, you screw it in a regular socket and it has like three big fan blade LED things. I don't know. We'll review that. Um, we'll show you a couple seconds on this channel what that's all about. So, what to do next on the Porsche. Okay, so we're on the big camera still, trying to hold her still for you guys. So here's what we have. We have the rest of our Meguiar's kit, our headlight restoration kit, which includes one of these little sanding palm sponge things. This one's getting about roached out. It comes with two 1,000 and 3,000 grit pads, and it comes with a little sponge to wipe on the clear coat, which is key on this. And then it has the buffing compound to do before the clear coat. So essentially what you're going to do here is wet sand of 1,000 and 3,000. You're going to buff it with the drill, right, with the buff pad, get it close, and then wipe the clear on. And that's pretty much it. Now I have a big ass buffer. We have all the buffing pads, all the buffing compounds, the Aguirre's 105. If you guys just want to buff the headlights on the car, go buy one of these $20 little kits. You can just do it with the drill. You don't have to tape off all your car. It's not that crazy where you need to do any of that. I'll put a link to the description for that and the hood shocks. For you non-Cayman guys, this is the best kit. The wipe on McGuire's kit the, was a heavy duty. It's in a yellow box. Link in the description. Go buy it. I'm gonna go buy another one right now because all you guys will buy it out more than likely. Let's buff these headlights in this car. Maybe a little time lapse. All right, real quick, I'll show you the haziness of them. You can see as we're getting that light, they're just slightly nasty. This one's a little bit worse. You can see just a little bit hazy, all right? And these are burnt on top from the high beams being so bright because they got lit in Nebraska. The high beams are on 24 seven out there. And did this. So we're gonna sand that a little bit. Maybe go a little bit extra heavy right there, but we'll be careful not to scratch it too much with the sandpaper to where we can't buff it out with the little kit. All right, we're still in this weird transition to where we have to look for stuff. Work five minutes, spend an hour looking for something, right? So we finally got it here. Can't even find my soap and water dispenser. We'll use Windex, we'll use Windex a hundred times. If you don't have soap and water handy in a squirt bottle, don't go out and buy a squirt bottle, it's stupid. You just need some kind of liquid to get in here. I'm more concerned about it up here. I don't think that's gonna come out at all. I 
and we're not hitting. Well, I don't know, it might come out just a little bit. We're not touching the paint. If you're not a fool, because we're not using crazy sandpaper, we're not using like 80 grit, you don't have to tape it off. If you are scared about doing this, tape it off or take the headlight out, right? It does feel a little rough on top, but that's gonna be under. A lot of guys are gonna say, oh, well, you just buy some aftermarket headlights or buy some new headlights, Nathan, because those are a little bit charred on top. Well, a new headlight for this is like $1,000 or more a piece. And I don't wanna, I'd rather have a little char on top and have factory HIDs than put a cheap aftermarket headlight in it. That'll probably just burn again anyway. You can hear, you can hear it cutting that stuff off. All right? You can see it haze up a little bit in the camera. Yep. And probably don't need to go too far with it. We'll do it one more time. I guess we don't have the option for mist on this thing, do we? First thing we're gonna do is rip that tag off that microfiber. Because we don't want to scratch our precious car. This thing's dirty anyway, so any little bit of smear is not really gonna matter. We're gonna go over here and put her 1,000 down, and we're gonna grab her 3,000. And you're gonna see we hit it with 3,000, let's see hit a little bit, nothing crazy. Because all we're doing here is taking the scratches from the 1,000 out. I'm just gonna clear it up. And it'll haze back up as soon as it dries. All right? Okay. I'll put that over here. Come back with our drill. Do our swirl X. That thing's dusty. Now we gotta pull the compound off of it. Use our Windex again for that. And let's take a look and see how we did. Not too bad to see one little smudge down here at the bottom. Okay. Now if you have some kind of brain damage situation where you have to tape it off, go tape it off. You don't feel comfortable? Or your uncle's cousin's brother's nephew owns a body shop and he knows and I don't know nothing. We'll go do what he does, right? I'm just showing you what works. Okay, where are we at here? So we wiped the compound off of that. Let's go back on with our clear coat. 
And see, it looks a little bit, it's buffed, but it's not like polished buff, right? Make sure it's good and dry. And somebody's burned this headlight before along the very edge or something's going on there. I don't even know. The guy said he had him restored, so. Give her a little blow. Essentially a plastic clear coat. Saturator sponge. And we're just gonna go up here and we're just gonna wipe it. We're not gonna get crazy with it. We're not wiping any on the paint. And once you wipe it once real good, don't freaking touch it. And if you go back and keep trying to wipe it, you're gonna have a problem. Look in the shine, make sure you got it all. I wanna go back and wipe it again, but I know better, right? There's one little spot right there. And that's it. Now see how shiny it is? Let me see if it looks that way in the camera. You never know. Yep. It's about 98% there, 99% there. So repeat on the other side. Let's get it done. All right, so here we are. Everything's all done. They look 99% better. You can see here. This one over here just has a little bit of a smudge. I don't know if you can even see it on camera. It's like right there. I might let it totally dry and wipe it clear again. Looks like it has a little bit of dust. Maybe from buffing that one with the buffer. With the little buffing wheel. But that's it. She's done. Okay. So that's all finished. I've been in negotiations with a 986 Boxster, right? Canary yellow. It's just so hard to tell by the pictures what's going on with the paint. It looks like panels are different color, but I can't, the guy says it's not, but I can't tell. Um, it needs a little interior work. How many of you guys would like to see that? Write in the comments below, is 986 Boxster a thing I should do or not? Or think it's just a money pit and it's just a waste of time? I don't know. It's going to be it. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good day.